the Bible is like a soup. Mm. You know, there's so many little things in it. Right. And the big soup is a pot of love. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast, everybody. I am Spencer Cartier. I am Pajmina. Pajmina, you kind of remind me of the guy from Harry Potter um, who was hiding <laughs> Voldemort in the back of his head. <laughs> and this here is Frank. Looking like a frat boy today, isn't he? He is. A little, little fr- <laughs> like I'm, I'm a little intimidated by him. I feel like I'm about to get kicked out of a party for not being... I'm never intimidated by frat boys. Well, that's because they let the girls in, but they don't let us boys in. Justice for boys. I don't even want to go to a frat party. Boys for justice. How about that? I don't want to go. And I'm not you going don't, to. You don't have to. I don't have to? Mm-mm. I think I'm pretty aged out for your frat parties. How's everyone doing, guys? Um, uh, Have you been good? Have you been on your best behavior? <laughs> Sanders always watching. Why don't sounds like Dora? Have you been good? Have you been good? Why don't people bring up Santa's list more times than December? You know what I mean? Oh right. Like in December, it's uh, don't be on the naughty list. Why is it never in April twenty first that people are saying you were bad? Don't forget. Is it because kids are so short sighted? Yeah. They're like I don't even know when Christmas yeah. will be. I don't even know if I'll be alive for Christmas next right. year. Yeah. Little kids always say that. <laughs> <laughs> I did see a thing around Easter time, and it was like a um, a meme, not a meme, whatever. It's like a little thing, and it was like, it was like Santa, you know, keeps the list who gets the who gets the gifts, but the Easter Bunny's just like trying to unload the uh, you know, the eggs and candy. Like, that's yeah, funny. He didn't care one bit. No, you can be the worst child. And, yeah, and just take it. Well, I I didn't get an Easter basket this year. Um, moving on. Um. Hope everyone's doing well. Get yourself uh, the Easter basket. Get yourself the engagement ring. Get yourself Get yourself the engagement ring? Yeah, why not? I'm kind of anti engagement ring. And here's why. Okay. I get it. A diamond is a woman's best friend. Is that how it goes? Sexist. What you, uh, Diamond is a girl's best friend. That's Marilyn Monroe. I understand sexist, but you, there is there is was it called cliches that people start to like, like what came first girls liking jewelry or jewelry being a girl thing and then girls like things that are meant for them i don't know if if give guy, guy you see a lot of rappers guys love jewelry why aren't we getting the engagement ring? well yeah Another in, the o- point. in the old days you know the pharaohs they were very bejeweled yeah they were all the gold trinkets and stuff um i think the rings for men went out of fashion in the industrial revolution when their fingers all fell off. Everyone. there. There's actually a statistic that everyone during the Industrial Revolution did not have fingers. So they couldn't wear rings. So they couldn't wear rings. No. And so the rings that they had in their possession, they had to give to the women. The well, women just picked them up off the ground. Oh, there's that many rings. <laughs> no, I meant, you know how you're not allowed to wear rings during uh, around machinery. Yeah. I do know that. And so in the old days, the women didn't work near the machinery. Okay. Unless it was the sewing machinery. <laughs> Well, um, you know, I think it should be a uh, universal thing. And flowers, too. Guys don't get enough flowers. They do. I don't know where you live. I don't know what's happening. Guys get flowers? Where yeah. do you live? I would love to live. Do you live in the land of milk and honey? I live the in the promised land. land? <laughs> flowers for men. Flowers for men. Oh, we should open up a store. Flowers for men. Oh, it seems kind of weird. Um, <laughs> back to my original point. Okay. The engagement ring. Yeah. I am for the... I'm not for it at all. And here's why. Okay. You know, the, the cliche, oh, it's got to be um, 20% of the yearly salary. I don't know what this number is. I don't think that's it. The idea is you throw... It's like two months or something. What did I say? 20% of your yearly salary. 20% of your yearly salary is basically two months. Is it really? Well, yeah, because if, if 10% You're so is smart. I don't know why no one snaps you up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, do I not like engagement rings or do I just say that? Because <laughs> I'm never getting married. Um... My thing is this. See, the idea is, oh, he spent a lot. Oh, girls would be like, I want. He thinks an, a lot of you because I want an expensive engagement ring. Here's my mm-hmm. thing, and I can't say it because I'm not the girl in this sexist world we live in. But you're gonna spend three thousand dollars on a ring. I'm sorry. Get me a ring pop and let's go travel to a type to a type one. I know, one. but in the old days, when when the girl. 
walks around the town and 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 goes around places the family and friends and strangers and and co-workers and employers the, the the trip doesn't show on her on her person so they're like so it's all about other people right of course no i'm I, i'm not i'm not is that the world we're, we're living in now yes i'm not condoning it but i am realizing it so you need to have the ring so that when pe- people see a sparkling rock on your hand they'll say wow she is connected to money somebody thought she was worthy enough to put how all this much, money on her hand and she gets to walk around with it on her hand. How many dollar signs am I worth? How many how many dollar signs do you love me? Is what it's saying. Yep. Um so I'm against it, you know? I'm against it too. I I, <laughs> I, I think why? Poor K. Now, you know, I mean like I get it if you like have the money to spend. Why not? As, as an addition, but to uh, for people who are doing like they're if you have to count 2 months of salary and calculate it, you're obviously budgeting your money. I know it's crazy. Go, go frivol it. I'm not. I'm not one for a small wedding. I'm not. I'm not a person who's like, let's just go the cheapest route. I like spending money. And we're getting close to marriage season, aren't we? We are. I, I like spending money, but I like spending money on things that you're going to experience together, memories, and so for something so small to be worth so much. Well, because the ring, when the girl wears the ring. Or, or any whoever's wearing it in the relationship, the boy, the girl, whomever. It says, when the girl wears it, it says she's worthy of this large amount of money. And when the girl wears it, it is saying that you have that much money to have handed it over to her. I, I get it. Yeah, it's... it's um, I understand it. I'm just not for it. I'm not for it. But, um, hey, you know, but then again... Uh, some people like it some people uh it's a constant reminder of wow yeah I, gifts are my love language and so i guess i'm going to now see the other side of it where it's not about there's no disappointment in the amount that he spent mm-hmm. if it's true love mm-hmm. but it's wow he saved uh, he, he wanted to do this like he, he wanted to give me a, a gesture and that was that's nice that's sweet life is hard life is hard life is hard the hardest and if you start to think about every single thing you know what does it mean to to buy the ring what does it mean to take the person's name what does it mean to wear a white dress what does it mean that to get married it all goes back to sexism no but i'm saying it's just too too much trouble okay you know what i'm saying S- some things you just you know what i'm saying everything's not a fight choose your battles you know, it's because life, you want to do a lot of important stuff in life and you want to, you, you know what why, I'm saying? Why spend so much time uh, thinking about the, the, and trying to unravel and it and Hey, you know, yeah, everything doesn't need to be a philosophy discussion of why are we doing this? I was thinking this today. Um, are you allowed to curse on here? It depends. Okay. There's this old woman. I saw a clip, you know, and, and you know, and they, they always want to ask the oldest people, like, what's the meaning of life or what's your advice? Yeah. You know? Uh, they don't necessarily know. No, everyone gets old. Yeah. It's like, it's not like the only people that get old are the people who re- figure yeah. it out. But so this old woman and people like the clip because she says, um, my advice is stop in <laughs> and just live your life. <clears throat> yeah. Because she said that, it made me think of the word bitch. And bitch is a sexist word. It's a female dog. It's a female dog. So if you're being, um, you know, so you would be, so you'd be referring to a, a female. Yeah. Right. Right, so she's the bitching became women nag, women pick at you, women yeah. are you know, um, whatever, like just a pain in the neck. So, to, to now, when you say, Oh, like you're bitching, it's like you're complaining, you're finding fault, you're not mm. being happy. Therefore, the origin of that word is sexist, it's against women, but I don't think it is anymore. Okay, I see what you're saying. That's what I'm saying. So, like, you, every everything, like. Why are we doing this? You know, it's like, maybe just let some things, you know. Let it be. <laughs> let it be. Let it be. Yeah, I, it I, be. I hear you. Yeah, like, there's a time for just going with the flow. Because you lose all your energy. Yeah. And, like, there is things that we really need energy for. And more than you lose your energy. Like, let's look at a, a wedding, for example. I, I feel like sometimes you don't want to be that guy. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like you don't always need to be right. that guy of, like, well, uh, technically, should we do this? And right. like, if I brought up my whole engagement spiel to a girl, it's like, 
just get the ring. Right. Like, uh, right. All my friends are having one. Like, right. let's not even make that a part of, well, actually, the yeah. finances could be better off. Right. And it's like. Or is it good for your own self to think about things and, and, yeah, and choose the life you want to live? Yeah, it's fun sometimes. Like yesterday, we were talking about high thoughts, you know. Yeah. Um. But but generally, yeah, you could fall into um a little a little cynical um habit yeah. of you know pulling yeah. everything apart and why does Santa have a list and this and that and it's like let's kind of just live. We, we, we talked about it for Thanksgiving. Um. You know, we were saying like, oh well, you know, like the pilgrims and we like that whole spiel of like right, and then. Our answer was kind of what you're saying, which was, it's not about that. It's about right. community and, and family and friends. Like, right. don't be the guy at Thanksgiving who's saying, well, did you know that Thanksgiving- This is about murder and yeah. mayhem. It's we like, should it's all not. protest. It, it, it's, it's about what- Because things evolve, yeah. Yeah, it's what it's evolved into, and, and it breeds a new life of its own. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, we did a full little circle there. Started with no engagement rings and then said, you know what? And that's what sometimes happens when we hammer it out. Hammer it out. Happy birthday, Bridget. Happy birthday, Bridget. Happy birthday, Bridget. Hope you are doing well. So she just missed Aries. And so she has to be a Taurus. It's Taurus season, baby. What? You think because we're a Christian podcast, but you can't talk about Zodiac signs? Happy birthday, Hannah. No. No? Monday. Oh. We won't be here, so. We'll talk about it on Wednesday. Okay. <laughs> it's Taurus season, baby. The bulls are out. You mess with the bulls. You get the horns. You get the horns. Mm-hmm. How about that? It's my time. It's not my aunt's time. It's not my friend's time. They might be Taurus's also. I'm the main bull. <laughs> uh, great time to be alive. Um, gosh, uh, I want to thank the Academy. It, did you just say it was Bulldog Day or something? No. You just said some kind of dog. Oh, it is Bulldog Day. Oh. It's National Bulldog Day. Do you think there's any I wonder. Parallel? I wonder. I wasn't even going to bring that holiday up. Fascinating. <laughs> that is fascinating. I'll have to look deeper into that. Okay. Um, it's also national. Hi- high five. High five day. No hand sanitizer. I rounds. don't really like high fives. I think a lot of people don't. Isn't it like a joke? Like, I don't do that. I don't do high fives. No, for me, fives. it's just. There's so much um, social... We should have done a sanitary one. <laughs> I feel like you're in prison. <laughs> There's so much social cues that are hard to wrap my head around. And when two hands are coming together, my brain does that meme. Oh, of like, you get worried. Uh, and it's like the high five, I feel like, is the hardest to grasp because it's like, is this person really giving me a high five right now? And I've been left hanging. I don't high- even see people doing high fives anymore. That's the thing. It catches you by surprise. No, ever since COVID, people stop touching. Yeah. Or the el- elbow. Elbow. I like the elbow because you see it coming from a mile I away. I like the full body check where you fly backwards. Oh, You, you have yeah. to be the first one to do it. Where, otherwise- where you jump- yeah. Well, I hope that they're also doing it. Otherwise, you're just slamming into people. That's what I want to do. Like hockey yeah. where they hit into the glass. We could do that. And we could hit into the glass. No, I like I like the, the fist pound casually obviously i'm not gonna walk are you doing it this way i yeah i i I, no i even do let this a little covid one that i like even more because you don't even need to make eye contact so like when i walk into the gym and if i know the guy working so what's up man you just put your hand up and then they can just like meet the side little boom oh that's different put it up because like this is too much like yeah dude (laughs) it's like hey what's up man you're not putting your Sorry to the engineer's ears of that big laugh I just made. That's all right. Um, hey, laughter. How is... about the booty bump? Do you ever do that? <laughs> <laughs> the booty bump? Yeah, you just turn around. That way you're not like face to face with the person. Because of um, COVID, people aren't wearing masks anymore. Now you just bump know. your butts. My butt's kind of ticklish. <laughs> Cut oh. that out. Cut that out. All right, guys. Well, that's enough about fist bumps and high fives and low fives and in the middles. Because it is Thursday. My I'm doing thir- terrible stuff on the audio. I was just screeching this back and forth. That's all right. It's Thursday, guys, which means only one thing. If you've been around, you know this. If you're new, welcome. Because it is Walk Through Thursday. Roll the intro, please. Welcome back. Hope you're having fun. Because Walk Through Wednesday just begun. What is up, guys? It is Walk Through Thursday, April 21st, 2022. What a beautiful day to be alive. What is Walk Through Thursday? Wonderful. It, <laughs> yeah, you are not wrong. It's the day we open up the Bible. Mm-hmm. A lot of days we talk about the Bible. This is the day we open it up. Right. 
Bible's open. And we pick a verse. Um, shout out our Instagram stories. If you follow us at Crook and Crow, we pit verses against each other every day until there's one book that's a winner. But join join the fun over there. We pick a verse and we look at it. We look at it deeply and sincerely and we try to get more meaning out of it. We don't... We uh, Every Bible... The Bible is like a soup. Mm-hmm. You know, there's so many little things in it. Right. And the big soup, it's a pot of love. Right. It's a pot of love that you can just share and use and it can nurture your body. Yeah. It can keep you warm in the winter. Yeah. Walk through Thursday... We're taking one of those ingredients out. What are you putting in your soup? We're pulling out a carrot and we're looking at that carrot and saying, what does it make? What makes this carrot special? Right. I know it's going to go in the soup. I know it's going to fit into this pot of love. But what's about the carrot? What about that piece of chicken? That might taste good in the zone. So, um, so we're more like deconstructing it than well. Well, than I wouldn't throw it. around the word deconstruction. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. In Christianity, I was thinking in, in um, I was thinking culinary. Nothing against deconstructionists. <laughs> it's just that is a specific. It has term a term, and then people Christianity. make opinions about what we, what, what it means. And we, I didn't we mean are, that. Yeah, we are, we are just taking we're taking those ingredients okay. out. I didn't mean that. Way. I meant it in a culinary sense. Yes. So when you have a deconstructed sandwich, right, or any kind of recipe. Um, they take it apart. Go to bed. <laughs> they take it apart. They take it apart um, the other way. So what I was saying was when you say soup, it's like, okay, we're going to put in the carrot. We're going to put in the potato. We're going to put in the celery. But but for us, the Bible verse is already the soup. We, Sorry, have, to, soup. we have to say, what did they What's use to make that flavor, that well, thought? That... I see a carrot in there. All right. Let's right. look at this carrot. Right. Anyway, guys, that's what we do. We break it down sentence by sentence. Line by line, word by word, letter by letter. Let's just get into it. Ha. Do you have your phone? Yeah. Because no. I sent you to. I have no paper. Okay. That's today. We are reading from the book of Two Samuel, not one Samuel, Two Samuel. Right. Some people get confused that there's also numbered two different books that are numbered. Or as, as, well as someone told us, first and second. Yeah. Apparently, some people say second Samuel. Right. Which is okay. Yeah. Uh, they they might have said it like we were saying it wrong by saying two Samuel. They might have said that. And I would say, uh, who cares? God doesn't care. <laughs> God so doesn't care. This this if you see the I sent you that text. If you see the next text I sent you, it what last week it was one of the poll questions. Oh, nice. Uh, okay. And it's the one you picked. Sounds about right. Did it win? It won. It, Ooh, it by won, a, by a country mile. It won in a landslide. Eighty to twenty. All right. So this is um two Samuel twenty two seventeen to twenty. Yeah. It is titled David's Song of Praise. Okay. Now, you know how I feel about David. Yeah. I just love the guy. Right. (laughs) So let's just read it. Okay. He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemy, from my foes who were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. David has such a way of words. He does. I bet you could sing that. Oh, um, David's song of praise. Yeah. Duh. 2 Samuel 22. Um, this chapter contains a song of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving um, of David, which you said. Uh, and it corresponds to Psalm 18 as well. So you could you could look that up, which we're not doing right now. but Okay. Um, yeah, so, uh, obviously all good stuff here. Um, this is one of those, those good verses that you can just repeat to yourself. And as a reminder of of, through tough times, I would say. Right. So let's just walk through it. Shall we? Yes. Shan't we? He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. Right. Now, you know, what's funny about this. This is old Testament, but this is kind of, I guess it would be. What's the opposite of reminiscent, pre-miniscent, <laughs> post-miniscent of when Jesus pulls Peter out of the water? Oh, you, you always get that image of Jesus in the water You're and, right. and, and Peter's drowning. Wow, that's really interesting. And he, he reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. Right. And it's this idea, this like... Oh, this, uh, yeah. That's always interesting when they have the callbacks yeah. from the New Testament to the Old and Testament. It's, it's interesting, you know, because especially... Like the idea of drowning and stuff is like right. the, the the deep water is just taking you, right? And you are almost out of breath, and 
that hand, right. that symbolic hand that's pulling you right. out. Right. So in in an everyday application, you don't have to be drowning in water, but in, in any yeah, situation yeah. that you feel yeah, overwhelmed. Yeah. We sometimes say, I feel like I'm drowning over here when you yeah. just have so much going on. I'm drowning in like, work, yeah. Yeah, uh, you're just so caught up. Like you feel like you're being engulfed in emotions or uh, a depression mm-hmm. of just being weighed down like cinder blocks around your ankles. And yeah. He drew me out of deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemy, from my foes who were too strong for me. Now, I like this one. Okay. And I'm going to tell you why. Okay. This doesn't need to meet, uh, mean metaphorical foes. Okay. But why I like it is the last part. So, you're asking me from powerful enemy, from my foes who were too strong for me. Yeah. Sometimes I, th- I think we think that god will will will, or like will protect us from or you know when when they say god only gives you what you can handle yes and then you sometimes say oh i can't handle this this is i i'm drowning right i like that it it says um who were too strong for me it's like it's saying you've gotten beat you you, you've been defeated or feel defeated at least and you're being saved from that And, and so it's like it's not like how can God be there for me? I, I, I've i already been defeated. And it's like, well, you, you might, uh, or they, they might be too strong for you, what you're dealing with. And that's what God's going to save you from. Right. It, it, it's the things that you can't do on your own. Well, that, yeah. I'm glad you said that because that's what I'm getting that, you know, sometimes people say, are we robots? Are, you know, yeah. if everything, if God knows everything we're going to do, or if we're always safe, you know, what are we doing walking around? But, um, the fact that he spe- specifies here uh, that we're too strong for me, I'm thinking because there's lots of, um, well, God is all, you're always working through God and with God, yeah. but there's lots of challenges that you, you feel confident, you know, you can, you, you, you approach them and then you are able to do them or get past them or, you know, walk with them. Um, so it gives you some praise too, because you're like, I do, you know, cause you don't, you don't want to be. Just a lame duck. Yeah. So there's things that I do and, and um, you know, you, you are helped with the Holy Spirit. But there are things that, and that's when you say, God, help me. You know, I can't. Yeah. I, you th- you believe you can't do it. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And then, yeah, it's like through him, you can get through it. Right. And, um, yeah. Um, so this is still uh, talking about the enemies. They confronted me in the day of my disaster. But the Lord was my support. So uh, what do you think about that? Well, I just think it, it, the sentence is reading as your weakest, weakest moment. Because um, like I just said, so the things that were too strong for me, I felt was also acknowledging that you had victories and that you have things that yeah. you can do and, and everything. So um, just think of like a video game, you know, and you're like, you got this guy and then you turn, you get this guy, you yeah. get this guy. But on this line, they confronted me in the day of my disaster is like he wasn't winning on that day. He yeah. was he was beat down on that day. And and they were kind of going to come take advantage now. Yeah. Because he's down. And um, I want to say I always the kind of translate some of these enemies and stuff to not even be other people. Right. Sometimes it's yourself. Right. Because I feel like so much that it's like. I'm getting kicked on the ground by five guys who are jumping me. And it's like, I'm not going to overcome this. But I, I don't think that's like, obviously everyone has free choice and they can right. do what they want to each other. But internally, yeah, it's like, that's when you like things become like too strong for you. The, vo- yeah, the bad voices in your hear, head. I'm my own worst enemy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so they confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord is my support. I, I see that as that internal when things just go awful like right. you were ruined right and that's when mentally it's like it's not worth it just give up you know what i mean like like those kind of like thoughts of of those negative because that's when you're your own worst enemy when you're at your lowest because you and i find that is what the most time you could use the support of right god where it's like you can shut up the own voices in your head and, and yeah. the own self-doubt and and lack of self-worth by saying uh i'm God's my support. Uh, he'll, he'll, he will allow me to get through the worst day of my disaster. Yeah. <clears throat> and I like support because, again, 
God is all powerful. He can move mountains. He can, you know, stop the sun from shining. So he can knock over your enemy. You know, he can yeah. do anything. Um, but that's not what he, he like, just like a father with a child. You, yeah, I could carry the child everywhere, but I want him to learn how to walk and I want him to feel, you know, um, accomplished. Yeah. So um, in the day of my disaster, the Lord was my support. The Lord didn't take over and yeah. then you know i'm yeah. just i i am just a baby it's like i'm going to support you and because i know you can do it yeah mm-hmm. yeah i i see it i see it like uh you know like a child walking and just the the parent isn't there lifting them up and letting them fake step right he's using his hands for something to grab up on right and letting the child walk right without falling he brought me out into a spacious place he rescued me because he delighted in me I like this. Okay. That's it. Well, a lot of people <laughs> voted, so. <laughs> no, I, I like this because uh brought me out into a spacious place. You can talk on that. Um, he rescued me because he delighted in me. I like that because, especially with the word rescue, sometimes you think like, uh, I'm always asking for God's right. help. Like, he's probably given up on me. People yeah. say that. Like, oh, he's given up yeah. on me. And it's like, oh, uh, calling on him. Right. It's not like, here we go again. Got to save. Right. Got to save Spencer. Right. It's, he delights in you. He, it's it's the parent. No dad or mom who is doing that support of the child. They're not getting mad that they have to right. pick him back up. It's like. Some do. And I don't like it. Good point. You know, I, I once was with my friends and our, our, a bunch of girls were in a, a, too many girls were in one car. Broke down on 95, like three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. We didn't know what to do. Someone called a dad and he he did come for us, but he was furious. He was like screaming to get in the car and like he was just so mad and like so judgmental. And so like we kind of wished we had just taken our chances walking yeah. on 95, you know? Well, yeah, that's but, true. Like, this is like when, whenever we whenever we compare it to a parent, obviously it's the great. It's the greatest. It's like saying the ideal loving someone mm-hmm. and then God's love. It, right. It, it's, but I was even more referring to it, which still isn't always good, but. The actual baby being held up. Yeah, yeah. And like, they're not trying to help you to walk and trying to be there for you. Right. Because it's a, it's a hassle. Like, right. when are you going to start walking on your own? Right. It's the delight. Like, yes. uh, you're, you're devastated to miss a child's yeah, first Yeah, you steps. have to remember that. And, and it's the same, the same, the same way, you know, uh, a parent will be so upset to have missed the child's first steps. Right. It's that kind of love. Right. Where the kid can't walk. The kid keeps falling. Right. This little one-year-old keeps falling. Why would a parent get mad at that? It's like no, they look they, forward to the are, day. They are delighting, right, to be that support, yeah. and to see the child grow, mess up, but then grow again, right. And I think that's that's a the biggest you, yeah. takeaway. So you said um, about the spacious. If I would just say yeah. something, um, I just again, like when you were talking, you said it's it's more of like fighting your own demons or fighting yeah. having your own challenges, things you want to work on. And sometimes um, you said you literally, you not literally feel, but you feel like you're drowning. Yeah. So that statement there. But you also feel like you're boxed in. A little claustrophobic. Between a rock and a yeah. hard place. Um, I'm in a very tight spot. Yeah. All these words are pe- how people explain when you're, you know, and so he yeah, brought me out into a down spacious place. Like I can breathe. Yeah. Like I just needed someone to just Give me some space here. Give and, me some you space. Like you, yeah, you have your f- peace of not being right. confined and like yeah. uh, I feel like you're trapped in your own body. Right. It's just this freedom uh, right. of a spacious place. And that's the other thing with God. You know, it's always this idea of free will and freedom. Mm-hmm. And that's like what the spacious place gives. Yeah. It's like I can breathe. The opposite of the drowning is like, like when you think spacious place after being confined, it's I can finally breathe. Right. Right. Like, ah, I can breathe. Yeah. Opposite of drowning. Full parallel. Great verse. Not surprised it won on the poll. <laughs> we still have to see David in the Sight and Sound Theater. Yeah, it's out now. I know. Well, guys, that is our podcast. Hope you liked it. Hope you got to walk through it with us and learn a thing or two. If you got something different from us, awesome. Let us know down in the comments below, why don't you? We'll be back tomorrow for Dr. Seuss Friday. I wouldn't miss it if I were you. It's going to be a good one. Until then, go out and... Uh, Ooh, high five people. <laughs> <laughs> Peace.